Although the rules we reviewed in sections 8.5 and 8.6 work for most species, there are three exceptions to the octet rule we have yet to discuss. Some species have odd numbers of electrons, though this is quite rare. These species are called radicals. The element boron is a strange element and is sometimes happy with only six valence electrons. The most common exception to the octet rule is for heavier atoms, which can have an expanded octet of more than eight electrons. You may have heard of radical oxygen species and how you want to avoid them. This is generally true. These species have an odd number of electrons and therefore cannot possibly satisfy the octet rule. When a radical species reacts with a normal chemical, the products will also have an odd number of electrons. In other words, reactions with radicals produce more radicals. Those radicals can go on to react with more species, producing more radicals, and the chain continues. Now, all of the important components of your cells have an even number of electrons. So it's important that your body reacts away the radicals and neutralizes them before they can turn your DNA into a radical species. This is why it's important to consume antioxidants, which have long series of double bonds that can neutralize radical species. The nitrogen monoxide molecule on this slide is an example of a radical species. Both of its resonance structures are shown on this page. Now, which of these two resonance structures is dominant? Pause the video and calculate formal charges in order to answer. The left structure is dominant since it has no formal charges. The elements beryllium and boron, though they're not very common, they can have less than a full octet. Specifically, beryllium can have four valence electrons around it and boron can have six valence electrons around it. Now, these exceptions are rare, but boron shows up more frequently than beryllium does. The last exception is the most common and the most important to remember. Elements in period three and below can use their d orbitals to expand their octet. In practice, this means they can make up to six bonds or have up to six lone pairs. If your central atom is in period three or higher and you can't make a happy Lewis structure with normal octets, it's okay to give the central atom some extra bonds or lone pairs. Let's practice by drawing the Lewis structure for the perchlorate ion. First, try drawing it with a regular octet, then see if you can't make a happier structure with an expanded octet. We'll start the same way we always do, by counting valence electrons and forming bonds to the central atom. This leaves us with 24 electrons remaining. I'll distribute them in a way to give each oxygen a full octet. Then I'll assign formal charges. Look at those formal charges. That is an unhappy structure. Every single atom has a formal charge and the central chlorine contains a gigantic three plus charge. At this point, I remember that chlorine is in the third row of the table and can use some d orbitals to form additional bonds. I'll move the lone pairs from oxygens down to form double bonds to the central chlorine atom. Excellent. In this structure, I have a single formal charge left over and it's on the most electronegative element, oxygen. This is a happy perchlorate. Time for a bonus question. Draw the other three dominant resonance structures for perchlorate. Then calculate the ClO bond order and the formal charge on oxygen. Perchlorate is a symmetric molecule, so I can construct each of the additional three resonance structures by rotating which chlorine oxygen bond is a single bond.
Notice that I also have to change which oxygen has the negative charge when I do this. Now, these four resonance structures are all equivalent, so they each contribute equally to the actual perchlorate ion. To calculate the bond order, I see that I have four total chlorine oxygen bonds. Three of them are double bonds with a bond order of two, and one is a single bond with a bond order of one. The math here shows the average bond order, which is 1.75. Thus, in the real perchlorate ion, each chlorine oxygen bond is in between a single bond and a double bond, but a little bit closer to a double bond. We calculate the formal charge in a very similar way. There are four oxygen atoms total. Three are neutral and one has a formal charge of minus one. The math takes the average formal charge and we get negative one quarter. Thus, the extra electron in perchlorate is evenly divided amongst the four oxygen atoms.